Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to show you how I stain, clear coat, and paint stair and railing components, the order in which uh, it works best, and how to get the best finish. Because the reality is, even if your joints are perfect, if the stain is off or the finish is off, you're going to lose out. Stay tuned, I think you'll find it really beneficial. Now looking through all the videos I've done on stair and railing building, I've realized that, you know, I've touched on finishing um, in probably every video to some extent, but really it, it is something that's so important and especially if you're a professional doing work for other people, if you can't get the stain right, uh, you're, you're going to have problems and complaints. In fact, that's probably the only place I've ever got complaints is on the stain color, to be specific. but. In any case, as a finishing carpenter, if you don't know uh, how to produce a nice stained railing or, or staircase, then you have to rely on painters, which is really going to jack your price up. I mean, painters are professional at what they do, but it costs, and that cost gets passed on to your customer. So if you can produce a, a really nice uh, stain uh, and clear coat finish on your railing and stairs and you know paint your stringers and risers and it looks pretty good, then there's more money in your pocket and you're going to have happy customers. Now I've trained about four different helpers and apprentices on how to stain and clear coat um, railing components and I have to tell you that there, there's sort of a selfish motive there is I really don't like doing it, uh, but I can do a really good job and I, I'm able to train people and let them take over that responsibility. And in fact, when it is a, uh, a paid employee that's maybe an entry level even, Eugene, for example, I trained him and within a week he was you know, staining uh, finished products with uh, exceptional quality. Uh, it saves the customer money and it makes you more competitive. So. I'm going to walk you through the entire process here. Now one of the things you'll notice, you'll pick up on throughout the video, is that uh, I like to work with oak if I'm doing staining. Uh, one of the nice things about oak, whether it's white oak or red oak, is that it's an open grain wood and that it absorbs stain really nice and it also doesn't show marks as much as a, you know, a, a close uh, grain wood like maple or birch. Now the maple or birch products, um, that's where you're going to run into problems with uh, getting a nice stain finish because lo and behold you can do everything right and then there'll be a bald spot or some kind of inconsistency in, in the finish. Uh, so that's why I like open grain woods. I'd also like to see more customers choosing natural and just have an oil or a clear coat finish on the natural wood and let the wood be the color and and I think that's the purest way uh, for for a carpenter to uh, you know show off his or her uh, projects is is natural color wood and if you want a dark uh, railing then you pick a dark wood now unfortunately where I am railings and stair components are generally either red oak or maple, the ones that are stocked in the suppliers. You can order white oak, you can order birch, um, but I don't know of any suppliers that do walnut or um, you know other, other types of wood that might be uh, desirable. So in any case, I'll just walk you through the process, show you all my tips, so I really hope you enjoy the video. You know, there's a real advantage of shopping local, especially at a place that knows their product. And same with the paint people I deal with, Superior Coatings. Uh, them and this Windsor Plywood, they just know their product, very friendly, helpful, They're not going to steer you in the wrong direction. The first thing I'll talk about is the order in which you tackle the project. If your project involves stair treads, then you're going to want to finish these first 
so that the lacquer has lots of time to cure before they're installed and, and take on foot traffic. If there are not treads involved, then I will normally stain all the components uh, for the railing system that don't need joinery or plugs, like newel posts and railings that have to be uh, mitered and joined together. In the case of newel posts, I like to install these into the floor system first before I do any staining, because you're going to have to put a plug into the hole where the Super UT goes, or if there's lag bolts involved, you'll have to plug them. And then if you do it properly and sand it uh, well, and then follow the process, it'll be very difficult to spot these uh, plugs. If there is a situation, I've run into this a couple times, where people can't allow you to stain inside the home. For example, uh, when there's young children involved or what have you, then explain to the customer that you'll stain the plug ahead of time and you'll do your best to make it look neat, but it will be more obvious than if you do it raw and then stain it after it's plugged and sanded. Now, uh, hand railings are a good example of something that needs to be joined with miters or a fitting that goes into a post, but they have to be fitted and mitered uh, first. This is a classic example of where you have to do all your joinery, uh, gluing and sanding prior to staining. And this is where you're going with a contoured railing into an easing and then a fitting. And you'll know that if you've ever done this before, that these fittings don't always jive 100%. So they have to be joined glued and then sanded after and it just simply won't work uh, nicely if you sand and stain uh, ahead of time. The first step is going to be sanding with the grain with a random orbital sander. I use my uh, Festool 125 sander and it does a, a very good thorough job. After that, I'll use a little foam sander and go with the grain. And, and again, both times I'm using 120. 120 will uh, give you a nice enough finish that will still allow stain to penetrate. One of the issues with uh, using a finer grit sandpaper is it'll polish the wood so well that it won't take stain. 120 will allow hardwood to take stain. And if you're getting swirl marks, that is probably uh, a, a sander issue, not the grit issue. And that's why I use a Festool sander. I understand there's some other great ones out in the market, but that's what I use. Now here are the two sanders that I use the bulk of the time for my railing jobs. This is the uh, Festool 125, which is a straight random orbital sander. And this is the RO90, which is a Rotex sander. And you know, the Rotex mode will allow you to do a little more aggressive work. Uh, those two sanders get the bulk of the work, and then I do have a Rotex RO150 sander that uh, is better for more aggressive jobs, uh, but it's not ideal for smaller components like railings and railing shoes. Here's a couple things you can do to avoid swirl marks on your wood. One is when you start your sander, start it on top of your piece. And when you turn it off, you turn it off, off the piece. So turning on is on the piece, turning off is off the piece. Also avoid any kind of movement like this with your sander. Sometimes people have a tendency to do that to try and get marks out, but what you'll do is leave a swirl and you'll leave an indent. The other thing I want to mention is even if these railings look really clean and pristine, they look like they're staying ready, they're really not. You need to sand them ahead of time because otherwise you're going to see little machining marks left by the shaper and the planer uh, after that stain and clear coat is applied. Now for the most part I'm using 120 sandpaper. This is the Festool Granat 120. And what's neat about uh, the sandpaper products is there's Festool makes a nice little sanding pad that you can wrap around. Uh, I believe this is the 6 inch sandpaper from my uh, RO150 uh, and use up you know your, your sandpaper that may have a little bit of wear to it and it's still good for hand sanding. This little pad is from SIA Abrasives and it's really uh, you know a good little sanding pad 
it's firm on one side, on this side, and then on the other side it's a bit softer and that is ideal for curved uh, railings. Second step would be to wipe down with a damp sponge. Once that dries, then you're going to lightly sand again, going with the grain to take some of those fibers off. So I'm going to keep this video focused on staining railings and, and the railing components and new posts and so on. Uh, not so much on the stair treads, even though I'm using one here for demonstration purposes. But if you want a better, more in-depth uh, look at how to refinish staircases, including stair tread finishing and riser finishing and so on, check out my video on stair refinishing and I'll put a link right here for that. The third step will be to apply the stain in a fairly liberal fashion and try and stroke it from one end to the other. Let it dry without wiping. The fourth step will be, you know, wait for overnight, for example, and do a, a second application of, of stain and just leave it on for five minutes and then wipe it off with a, with a dry cloth. So I'm going to use this old uh, stair tread as a demo piece. I realize it's a tread, not a railing, but I'm just going to sand it down really well with my RO150 and then we're going to go through the staining process. And there's also a little piece of maple here at the end and we'll just see how that takes the stain different than the oak. All right, so this sample piece has been sanded, wiped with water, and denibbed. And I've purposely left a couple of spots here where I haven't done any sanding, just to show you what can happen if you have perhaps a, a handprint or something on your, on your piece, and what will the end product look like. Also, here is some, are some very obvious scratches. Of course, I would never leave that on purpose, but I'm gonna just show you what that looks like once it's stained and also how you can repair it. And then here is the maple piece and we'll just show you what difference it makes when you stain maple versus uh, oak. Alright, so the best scenario possible when you're staining or varnishing, but is to go from one end completely to the other without lifting your brush. But of course, on an eight foot long piece of railing, that's impossible to do. So what you're going to do is you're just going to move that wet edge down the piece so that it moves and you don't have a blotch. And for my first application of stain, I don't generally wipe the stain at all. I just let it soak in uh, unless there's a big glob or something that I need to pick up otherwise that that will show. And I'm just using a garden variety foam brush and I go through a lot of these and uh, you know it kind of works the best for me as far as staining goes. Now here is this red oak that I've stained with one coat liberally uh, liberally uh, <laughs> applied and this is why you need to do a second coat because the open pores on the oak the, the stain doesn't get into that and that's what you need the second coat for All right, so now we're going to do a second coat. It's been well over an hour, maybe maybe even two. And I'm just going to 
put this on, brush it really well. Now I will mention to you that sometimes the the first coat will run and you just have to work with that, use it to your advantage and move that material around so that it uh, comes out with a consistent uh, you know coverage and not blotches. Again oak is much easier to stain than maple. Now this is the mark I want to talk about after and that's one that where it wasn't sanded properly. Now you can see the saw marks here and I'm doing that on purpose because even if they're really subtle when you stain that piece and particularly when you put your clear coat on they are just going to stand out like a sore thumb. Now here's another problem you can run into. I've gone over this a little bit extra to pick up a drip and now you can clearly see a line. So what you have to do is you now are forced to add another coat and move that along right to the end of the piece because even in five minutes that stain will dry enough that if you touch it after then uh, you're going to run into that issue. Alright so I've got this completely done second coat and here's another thing you need to learn is the discipline of just walking away because any more fiddling you do with your product and your project you're going to make it worse so I'm just going to go have lunch come back and see what kind of damage I've done. All right, so I'm going to put a coat of Finitech on this tread, this practice piece, demo piece. And uh, it's a product called X-Hybrid, which is a uh, hybrid oil, water, water-based product. Don't ask me how that works, but that's what it's called. And I'm going to use a foam applicator here. And... Uh, <clears throat> Just it, it seems to spread really nice and makes a really nice job. And and if you do, you know, several coats and follow, you know, the steps I'm showing you, it, it almost looks like a sprayed tr uh, product when you're done. Now it's a little bit too big for railings and railings. I'll just use a a, a foam brush. But uh, I just want to show you a couple things. I'm going to land this pad about here. I find if I land it right on the end then I get a big glob at the end and I just stroke right through like so and what you'll find is that when you put the pad back in your tray you'll see a bit of um, stain in that tray and what happens is that clear coat does make the stain kind of flow but again you lose it, use it as sort of to your advantage and it'll flow into all the little pores and cracks and make a, a really even job. And uh, one of the things also I'll mention is that if this was, you know, a good stair tread and a product that I wanted to uh, not have stick to the paper, I would stain all the way around to back about here by about, you know, two inches and then set it on a stick to dry so it wouldn't uh, interfere with the finish on the underside of the nosing. So that's about it. That's, that's what it takes to do one coat. The first coat. All right, so here's this oak tread after the clear coat has dried. And at first glance, it looks pretty decent. But in the proper lighting, you can see this scratch is very obvious. And even more obvious is this portion where I didn't sand properly. So that is what's going to happen to your material if you're not really careful with the sanding process. 
If you look over here, you'll see how the maple tread did not turn out nice at all. And that's kind of indicative of what happens when you hand stain maple with uh, a brush and then clear coat with uh, a pad. Uh, and that's why I would re recommend for bigger jobs that you have them sprayed with both stain and clear coat. And one of the things I know from experience, if you just sand one portion of that tread and try and repair it, it's again going to be very obvious. So what I recommend is, whether it's a railing or a tread or what have you, is you sand the entire thing clean and then restain. And that's pretty much the only way you can rescue something that has a poor staining job. Right, so my first coat, I used Finitec X Hybrid, kind of a yellow uh, color to it, and it does change the tone of your stain. This time around, I'm going to try this Saman product, which is white, and it won't yellow the product as much. Uh, I'm going to use an, a fresh pad on this applicator. It's just like a foam material, and we'll see what kind of job it does. All right, so off camera, I've done a second coat of Saman on this practice stair tread. And you can see here that unsanded spot has nicely cleaned up. And it looks really pristine. This scratch that was in this area has totally disappeared. And overall, I really like this Saman finish. It's got a, a less of a sheen to it, which doesn't show the brush marks as much. And also it doesn't have that yellow attribute that Finitec does. But again, that is a choice that a customer will make. Now, over here, you can see how the brush marks or stroke marks are more visible on the maple. The maple is acceptable, uh, but if you have, you know, a discerning customer, which most are, then you may want to opt for, for spraying, as I mentioned. Over here, you can see that the oak does not have visible stroke marks on it. All right, so this will show you what 120 sandpaper will do to your edges. Now you can see that instantly. And obviously I'm being careless because this is a practice piece. Well, what you want to do is you want to get about three coats on your railing components and then lightly sand with 320. After about the third coat, just to take the nibs off it before your final coat. And sometimes the final coat will have a hardener to it. Here's a little tip using the cut ends of an inch and a quarter baluster attaching to a chunk of plywood. You can use that as a platform to set a contoured railing on so you can do your staining and varnishing and while that is sitting secure and it's not sitting on the table. I've also made them up with a tapered wedge here that's half inch diameter for these grooved railings that take a half inch baluster. Same concept.
All right, so once your railing components are completely done, you're going to protect them for delivery. And sometimes it involves wrapping in brown paper or cellophane. And other times what I'll do, for example, with railings, whether your railing is two feet long or eight feet long, I'll attach a block of sheet goods to each end, just like this, with a screw. And I'll countersink so I, I make sure I don't break the screw off inside the railing. And then I can deliver this without this railing touching any of the surfaces in the back of my vehicle or trailer. Now, a mistake I've made before is I've used brad nails in these little uh, nailers, and it's not a good idea because when you pry this plywood off, it's going to snap the nail off inside your railing, and then you'll have something that can mess up your saw blade. Well, I think that's it for this video. Even uh, filming all the different segments for this video has drove me to the brink of insanity just because finishing uh, railing products and stair treads is so finicky. You know, I go out and I do one coat, uh, go and have lunch, come back out, there's a dog hair dried in the middle of the finish and so on and so forth. Um, trying to get things right is really painstaking. So just remember to do lots of coats of your clear finish on your stain products say three or four, and then do the final coat after it's installed, and if it needs a hardener, do it at that point. Now, <clears throat> I want to take a second and thank two people that have given me my first super thanks on YouTube. Now, you probably don't know what a super thanks is, but it's a way to financially contribute towards the channel, and I really appreciate it. These two guys, John Petria and Robert Willis, Give me a very generous super thanks, and I really want to thank them. And, you know, if you it's something you'd be interested in doing, by, by all means, I will put that towards better camera equipment and better lighting so I can bring you better videos. But for now, I'm going to sign out. Don't forget to like, share, uh, subscribe, and all that good stuff. If you got any questions, drop them in the comment section, and we'll see you on the next video. Get some footage of that? As long as I'm not in it. Yeah. <laughs> Have to see your talk to your agent about that. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Walking in Memphis. Don't sing, don't sing. No, no. Okay, this is a holdup.